thank you very much for inviting me. I'm also happy to be part of, or that I'm able and allowed to participate in this great lineup and hopefully interesting discussions during the day. Um, I guess I have a historically a bit more restricted notion of the technosphere. Uh, for me, the technosphere is the becoming autonomous of technology since, 19th, since the 19th century. So let's say that uh, it's, par it's, to speak with Simonon, the latest stage of the evolution of technicity. Simonon said, well, we have the elemental stage, tools, uh, instruments, uh, the individual state means in machines, uh, symbol machines, apparatuses, and so on. Then, and this was his last stage, technical ensembles. But I would say there's a fourth stage, and that's the technosphere, probably. Um, I felt it extremely difficult to find a trigger for the same reasons that Peter just uh, uh, spoke about a trigger. So, and I looked for a trigger that could enlighten or highlight two things at the same time. First, the emergence of the technosphere, and second, the technological unconscious inscribed into the concept of the technosphere as such that I felt somehow intuitively to be there. Since moving from an inner view and a human humanist perspective on technology to a view from the outside, as it corresponds, according to Peter Heff, to the becoming autonomous of technology, change of view we are compelled to, and that has been realized almost perfectly by, uh, the Sim by Simon Don. Does this change of view necessarily coincide with the shift from an anthropocentric to a systemocentric perspective, as Peter Heff supposes? Or is systemocentrism maybe itself a sophisticated expression of the technosphere, and hence certainly a possible way of describing it? I don't, I, I don't want to doubt this, but maybe not a way of working it through critically. So I had a lot of these strange, que strange questions in mind when I started even to think about it. And I found also an idea, <laughs> and ideas. You said, what did you say? People, apparatus, connections are uh, elements of the technosphere. In your works, it's clear that there are standards, bureaucracies, these are all our parts. Ideas, and I decided also to bring up an idea, operational logics, conceptualizations. And for me, and that's my trigger, and therefore you don't see really mm, a picture because uh, it's an idea. I could have shown a lot of pictures, but I decided not to sh show one. The idea of control. Um, here's my thesis. The becoming autonomous of technology has been triggered by the process of cybernetization that unfolds since the second half of the 19th century. Let me be very clear and decided at this point from the beginning. Speaking of a process of cybernetization contains much more than cybernetics as a post-World uh, War II formation of industrial military science complex and much more than Cold War rationality. The process of cybernetization starts with the emergence and implementation of the imperative of regulation and control in the second half of the 19th century, although, of course, the biological, physiological, mechanical and economical uh, formations of the concept of regulation might, of course, date back to the 18th century. I can't get into details here. Congo Yem has worked on this extensively. Um, I mean, you could bring in the whole question of reflex uh, since uh, 18th century. And for cyberneticians like Wiener, Ashby, Gray Walter, or Warren McCulloch, the reflex was a first notion of feedback. But cybernetics as historical body of knowledge and as a comprehensive epistemological project as it was, uh, embedded in a much broader historical current during, which, current during which regulation and control became not only powerful regulative epistemic ideas, but started to occupy, if not uh, subject, all modes of existence, ending up in today's total cybernetization. One might even say that since the second half of the 19th century, a new epochal imaginary rose that is still ours, 
the imaginary of regulation and control. And I use the expression um, uh, Im epochal imaginary in the sense of Hans Blumenberg who wrote, every epoch invents its imaginary standpoints from which it thinks that it can bring its characteristic type of knowledge to its most advantage execution. The change that these imaginary still Bloomberg standpoints undergo is also instructive in regard to the differentiation of the concepts of reality. And control is for me such an epochal uh, control, such an epochal imaginary. The development of the culture of control over the last 150 years or so has, uh, been dif has differentiated the cybernetic stage of nature as Moscovici has conceptualized it in the 1960s. From microphysical areas via the spheres to the living to human uh, beings to human societies, all are subordinated to the imperative of control. Today we are able to distinguish at least three major phases. Quickly sketched, the first phase includes the control revolution in the late 19th century and the expansion of the control paradigm of first order cybernetics immediately following uh, World War Two, James Benninger had, Benninger had provided a magisterial reconstruction of this first phase of the history of control, which equates rationalization with increased control. Faced with the crisis of control of advanced industrialization, triggered by the proliferation of flows of commodities, energy, signals, money, and even desires, I would say, control and planning are not just logistic problems, but we should not forget, this is the time of networks, of the uh, emergence of networks, as we, heard, as we just heard, telegraphy, telephone, electricity, railways, and so on. But it's more than logistic problems. They are problems that characterize an age. And even, as a quick insight, even this first industrial acceleration that caused the crisis of control dates back to the control problem, a control problem and its solution, Watt's invention of the governor of the steam engine in 17, 1788. According to Benninger, the implementation of the cybernetic or control hypothesis as the metaphysical, the metaphysical principle of universal regulation, the very emblem of a logic of the Gestell in which life itself implies control and became, becomes a control problem, is based on this great crisis of distribution. In its wake, history itself ultimately appears to be but a history of control. In conjunction with the concurrent emergence of an entire arsenal of technical media, uh, that marks the beginning of our present. Nothing less than a revolution in societal control takes place, Benninger writes. The concepts control, information processing, and finally communication far exceed the horizon of engineering and became the dominant conceptual triad. In this first phase of the history of control, to be precise, the main problem was adaptation, particularly the question of adaptive behavior. Its characteristic, to this day iconic and still insisting ideas, is the control circuit, the feedback loop. Maybe that's my trigger, but I couldn't bring one, you know. This was the problem. The second phase, implemented by second order cybernetics, started in the late 1960s, early 70s, makes questions of manipulative behavior its priority. Learning is now the main problem. Concretely, it deals with out of control, self organization, autopoiesis. And on the whole, both cybernetics have a trivial or trivializing conception of the environment as environment of a system. Starting around 2000, then, the third phase finally marks the new cybernetic facts of our present, which generally ought to be described in terms of an explosion of environmental agency, as Mark Hansen describes it. This phase witnesses the emergence of an environmental culture of control now, that thanks to the radical environmental distribution of agency by environmental media technologies, ranging from sensorial to algorithmic environments, from bio to nano to geotechnologies, renders environmentally visible, environmentality, sorry, visible, and prioritizes it is like never before. It thus ends the long-standing forgetting and denial of the environment and moreover raises it to the status of a new universal principle. 
This phase is the first to be genuinely environmental. Its main problem is the control, the management, the modulation of behavior, of affects, of relations, of intensities, and of forces by means of environmental media technologies, whose scope ultimately borders on the cosmic. In this third and rental phase of the history of control, the cybernetic stage of nature today fully comes into its own. Cybernetization crystallizes as environmentalization. Brian Massouni and Jennifer Gabriz, I don't, I don't know if Jennifer is still here, yeah, hi, uh, have described this following Foucault under the title of environmentality as new mode of governmentality. If I had to put this now in a nutshell, of the, I would say the following. The history of control, coextensive with the becoming autonomous of technology and the emergence of the technosphere, begins with a rupture within the history of causality, making recurrent or causular, circular causality or feedback, that's another word, to the leading epistemological, even metaphysical principle. And it flows into the implementation of maybe another but related, related type of causality yet to describe in its full details uh, um, a type of causality that Mark named feed forward. You see feedback, feed forward, and that starts the dominant environmental control culture. According to Mark Hansen, 21st century media directly mediate the causal infrastructure, he says, the causal infrastructure of worldly sensibility beneath the human senses. So what becomes possible is a management as well as an occupation of becoming, and I would really like to di discuss what this could mean. This control issue is deeply inscribed, I would say, in our coming infrastructural matrix, uh, and will be such, uh, as such an essential part of the technosphere and of the ongoing autonomization of technology. To come to a very short conclusion. Today's technosphere is the most radical and comprehensive cybernetic entity as what is likely to be the most far-reaching effect of the control revolution as a meta-cybernetics that renders technology autonomous and the Earth as a whole cybernetic. But in its long-range perspective, at least, the technosphere ultimately pushes beyond the cybernetic hypothesis and the long-lasting fascination with control. In the technosphere, although it seems to be a realization of control culture, every vision of control must come to an end. I quote, the technosphere is not a giant version of a navy ship have rights, alluding to the nautical and teleological background of cybernetic thought. This thought, in its view, is purposefully designed according to engineering spe specifications to suppress as many undesirable degrees of freedom as humans can think of, and in the process to provide the captain with specified lines of control." End of quote. In contrast, the technosphere reveals the absolute beyond all purpose. It is the very emblem and ultimately the geological manifestation of a fundamental purposelessness. And again, a uh, quote of Peter Heff, the technosphere resembles the biosphere complex and leaderless. So the big question for me is now how to account for this transgression of the cybernetic hypothesis that is an essential moment of cybernetization and its offspring, the technosphere itself in thought. How to account for this transgression in thought? What are the necessary conceptual strategies that will allow us to describe the very constitution of the technosphere as well as to draw the consequences for thinking? System thinking seems to be in itself a conceptual tool of cybernetization and belonging to the technospheric mode of rationality. Thank you very much. <laughs>